Marvelous Marmite is a savory treat. Marvelous it's Marmite. It's the sticky brown paste that we love to eat. Spread it on your toast in the morning time. It's that marvelous Marmite, yes, it tastes so Hello everybody, hello children, welcome to this online field trip. Now for today's lesson, we've come to somewhere very special indeed. In fact, it's a place where they make one of the nation's most favourite foods, marvellous Marmite. I'm Sam, this is Sinjin, who's hello. our expert for today. There you go, ladies and gentlemen, hello. <laughs> Thank you are. for having us here, Sinjin. Now as you can see, we're in a fabulous factory today. We're actually in Burton-on-Trent, which know. is in the county of Staffordshire which is in the middle of the United Kingdom, in somewhere called the West Midlands. Give us a wave and a cheer in your classroom, children, if you're having a, a good time, and if you're looking forward to looking around this factory and learning all about Marvellous Marmite. <laughs> You're not waving. Fantastic stuff. <laughs> they are so excited. And it's wholly surprising, Sinjin, because we are talking about one of the most iconic foods in the UK, aren't we? Marmite. Marmite, tremendous reputation, hasn't it? There what are we, we going go. to learn today while we're here? Well, I hope we're going to learn all about, first of all, what Marmite is, then learn what yeast is, then we're going to learn about what the materials that you find in Marmite, and also we're going to learn about its place in British society. Great stuff. Can't wait for that. Let's meet the schools we have taking part on today's online field trip then. Let's go to Hall Meadow Primary. They're in Northampton. Hall and Meadow. Mrs. Meek's class taking part today. Hello, children. Hello. Great stuff. So let's go to Loddon Primary now in Berkshire, where we've got Mrs. Simpson's class taking part today. Hello, children. Mrs. Simpson's class. Yep, there you go. And <laughs> let's go over to Oak Dean Primary now in Durham, where we have Miss Bestwick's class taking part. Hello, children. Hello. And finally, let's go to All Saints Primary now. They're in Glamorgan, and it's Miss Webb's class taking part today. Hello, Glamorgan. <laughs> Fabulous stuff. So as you can see already, it is going to be a great online field trip. I'm loving Sinjin already. Oh, You're brilliant. There you go. First of all, Sinjin, we have to clear this up, because obviously when you think of Marmite, you think people either love it or they hate it. There's oh. no sitting on the fence in no. between, is there? I should it's, hope not. It's called the Marmite effect, isn't it? That's right. Do you know, there are people who really don't like Marmite so much they'd barely like to taste it at all. We've got people who work here who don't like Marmite. <laughs> We've got people who taste Marmite who don't like it. Imagine that, you have to taste it and think that tastes just as awful as I thought it was last time. <laughs> That's perfectly good Marmite. It's an amazing situation. <laughs> there you go. They're in the wrong job, aren't they, really, no, well, having to taste Marmite every they, day? No, no, oh, they get paid. That's oh, the that's whole right. thing. There you that's go. Okay. I love Marmite, so I can't wait to learn about it. So first of all, whereabouts are we, Sinjin? Now, we're standing in a, a great room where we store what's called yeast extract, which is just one step before we create Marmite. Now, each one of these containers that you can see behind me and all around us, they hold about one point to just over a tonne, just over a tonne of this yeast extract paste. And we're going to blend those together and make that into Marmite. Now, some of them are full, some of them are empty. Now, oh. Sam, just put it down there and show them which of the full ones and an empty one. Okay, How do you tell them apart? The test. That's a full one. Oh, that hurt. <laughs> oh! And there's an, like a drum. It's like a big bass drum. Yeah, there Great. we go. Great, so that one's obviously empty. So that's it. We can tell just as simply as that. So, Sinjin, what is Marmite? Marmite is a yeast extract with various other materials added to it. As you know, it's got the characteristic flavour and it's a very, very concentrated food. And it comes from the brewing process, so does it mean that it has either beer or alcohol in it? No, there's, there's no alcohol in the, yeast in the yeast extract itself. When the beer, when the yeast comes from the brewery, it does contain alcohol but we lose the alcohol in a step called evaporation, where the, where the alcohol is just taken out, but we don't throw it away. What we can do is we can burn it in our boilers. So a lot of the energy that we would uh, have to obtain from other sources, we can actually make from burning the alcohol that comes in with the yeast. 
Fantastic stuff. Well, we are learning so much already, children, but I know that many of you already know a lot about yeast and Marmite because you've been on our website using all the great resources that we have on there to learn about it. So I'd like to put that to the test. Let's go over to Hall know? Meadow Primary now and find out um, what Mrs Meeks' class has already learned. Some spices in Marmite come from tree bark. That's a really good fact. Is this true, uh, Sinjin? Uh, some of the spices in Marmite come from tree bark. Some of the tricin bark might come from tree bark. That's a very, very good attempt to find out what we put into Marmite. <laughs> I'm, not, <laughs> I'm not going to comment on that at all. Oh, see, so Sinjin's talking about this secret recipe that they put in that I've been trying to get all morning and he won't let me know. So oh. maybe it's tree bark. Maybe, maybe, maybe they know the secret yes, recipe. Go. Really, really great fat children. Let's go to London Primary now. Marmite is a French word for cooking pot in English. Oh, okay. So is marmite the French word for cooking pot in That's English? Right. Is that right. Is that right, Sinjin? Marmite. Marmite. And, this, and if you look on the jar, there you are. Look, there's, there's a marmite on the jar. That's quite correct. Magnificent. Are you impressed with those I am. facts? Un peu en français, naturellement, c'est formidable. Ah, there you go. Bon. Alors, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I know. <laughs> there you uh, go. Well done, children. It's time to learn a little bit more about Marmite now. This is a bit more about the nutrition and the history. Enjoy. Marmite, B vitamins and the First World War. Marmite has been eaten in the United Kingdom for more than a hundred years. Over that time, it has become one of the most loved and most hated foods in Britain. And did you know that during the First and Second World Wars, Marmite was even sent to soldiers around the world in their ration packs. During the First World War, millions of British men were sent to fight far away from their homes and families, sometimes for months at a time. Life for the soldiers was unbelievably tough. They often lived outside, the noise was deafening, and even when they were not fighting, it was extremely hard work. The army noticed that lots of the soldiers were becoming sicker and sicker with a mystery illness. Doctors realised that the soldiers were not being provided with a proper diet and as a result were not getting enough B vitamins. Vitamins are essential to a healthy human body and our bodies can't store most B vitamins. So we need to get them from our diet. All the B vitamins work well together to support our health. In order to quickly boost the soldiers' intake of B vitamins, especially vitamin B1, the army ordered that Marmite be added to the soldiers' rations because Marmite contains B vitamins and is in fact one of the only vegan sources of vitamin B12. B12 is important for our red blood cells to work properly. Do you know which other foods the soldiers could have eaten to get B vitamins? Foods like green vegetables, such as broccoli, fish, such as salmon and sardines, and also eggs, whole grains and fortified breakfast cereals are all sources of B vitamins and can play an important part in a healthy, balanced diet. The soldiers who had been ill during World War I quickly recovered once they started to get enough vitamins in their diet again which really shows how important a good and nutritious diet is to our health. Today we can benefit from the lessons that people in the past have learnt about nutrition and make lots of fresh and healthy choices. Eating a wide variety of nutritious foods helps us to stay fit and healthy, meaning we can feel our best every day. Welcome back children, give us a wave and a cheer in your classrooms if you enjoyed the video. All Saints Primary what? love that oh, thing. Oh, All Saints Primary. My favourite part, though, was the fact that uh, Marmite was sent to the soldiers during the First and Second World War. Did you know that? Yes, I did. Such a fascinating fact, Sinjin. It really is. Yeah, it is. Um, talking of fascinating, we are going to take a closer look, children, at how the Marmite is made in this factory in a moment. Uh, it's a very technical process. But before that, talking of technical, I know that yes. our children have been uh, conducting their own experiments in the classrooms this week to learn all about how yeast works and I'd love to know how you got on so if we can go over to Oak Dean primary if someone could come up to the front of the class and tell me what you did in the experiment here we go 
We conducted our experiment by filling water bottles with two inches of warm water. Then we added two packets of yeast and mixed it in by shaking the bottle. Then we added some sugar to feed the yeast and give it energy so it could produce the gas carbon dioxide. We put a balloon on the neck of the bottle and left it for four or five minutes. Then the balloon started to inflate and the yeast began to bubble and fizz. Unfortunately, we didn't see an explosion, but our balloons did get quite big. Such great work, children. That was so, so good, Oak Dean. So what they did, Sinjin, was they put some warm water in the bottom, bottom of the bottle, added some yeast, added some sugar, and then put a uh, balloon on top, and then gradually the balloon blew up. Not like we've done over there, for we example. We have, there children, you go, yes. We, oh, you don't, you don't get to have all the fun. We no, had some fun today, didn't we? Look, so there's, there's that. that. But in here then, that's not straightforwardly going to be air, that's got this gas that yeast produces, that's going to be carbon dioxide in there as well. And look at that, you can see through, you can see my hand there, carbon dioxide is a colourless gas. There yeah, that's what Oak Dean said, they had carbon dioxide in their bottle, they're very technical. Yep. Uh, let's go to All Saints Primary now, let's find out what you concluded from your experiment. When you mix together with sugar, it has a chemical reaction which makes the balloon rise. Very, very clever, both classes or all the classes that did this. So they had a chemical reaction from putting all the different ingredients in the bottom of the bottle and that's what made the balloon blow up. But don't forget the chemical reaction is going on inside the yeast cells. And I'm afraid it's just the same like you and I, when we eat something, we turn whatever we eat into us. And that's the wonder of chemical reactions. There we go. Yeah, well done children. So good with their experiments. Yeah, tremendous very, very good and indeed. very illustrative. Now we're learning lots about yeast, but how does yeast turn into marmite, Sinjin? Right, well look, we've got, here we are then, we've got, the, this is the yeast, how we get it onto this site. And as you see, we receive it as a, a, as a sort of a thick, Quite sloppy sludgy, liquid. Isn't it? That's right, like a sludge. Yeah. Comes onto the site in about 26 tonne tankers, like petrol tankers. Wow. We put it through a process called autolysis, where we heat it. And this is what comes out at the end of the process. Now this is a lot more liquid. And if you notice, we're starting to get it to, to settle out. What's happened is the food in the yeast, the um, materials in the yeast, it's all dissolved in the water. Whereas the cell walls, they don't dissolve at all. They are starting to fall away from it. In order to get rid of the cell walls, we put it through a centrifuge. Now that whizzes the material round and the cell walls are thrown out at the side whereas the liquor stream carries on and we finish up with this and this is the liquor stream. This is called bright liquor. Also we need to wash the cell walls to make sure we get every little bit of the um, protein and so on off them and when we do that the water goes in there and that's very very dilute. No use at all for Marmite, I hope you'll agree. So we take this and put it through an evaporator. Now when you walk into school on a rainy day, you'll find the roads very dark coloured. If you go and have some wonderful lessons, for example, with Mrs Meeks or someone like that, tremendous lessons. And then at lunchtime, you go outside and the whole place is dried. The water's evaporated just in the time you've been having your lessons. That's what happens here. We accelerate that, we drive off some of the water and finish up now with, look at this, this is much thicker. This is more like engine oil or something like that, as opposed to this one, if you can see the difference there. Now, after that point, we polish it a little bit more, get it even smoother, and the way we do that is we actually force all of it. Now think about this, everything that's going to become Marmite has actually forced through a really, really thick cloth. And this is some of the cloth. Now you look at this, Sam. Wow, it looks that's, really thick. That's a cracker. Gosh, yeah, that's thicker than jeans. Exactly, it really is. It's amazingly thick stuff. That must be pushed really hard through there. Yep. I can't imagine anything getting through there. We ha we have really to, thick, children. We have to push up the push up the pressure just to get it through there. And, and once that comes through, is that Marmite then, Sinjin? Ah, once it comes through there, there's, as you, as you understand, we got it, it's gone through there like that and so there's still a bit of water left, we put it into another evaporator and all the solid material that's in there gets more and more concentrated. So the volume goes down, the, solid, the solids go up and eventually it gets into a sticky paste that we call yeast extract, which we're surrounded by now. Ah. But then we have to blend it. And we're going to show you, we're going to go through now into the blending area where we show you what happens to one of these. Great, exciting. There you go. Now normally we'd have someone here called, say, Steve Newbold, he's one of our heroes, <laughs> and he would haul one of these through and he'd bring it into this room here. It's very quick. 
quiet in here, St. Jim. It's There's not very many quiet. people around. It's all There's, machines, isn't it? It's all, it's all very automatic. And we can bring it through. You smell Marmite here. everywhere I walk. I should hope so. <laughs> it's making me feel hungry. <laughs> Now, the person who does it isn't personally strong enough, don't get the wrong idea, but he manages to get it from here, using a hoist up there, and he lifts it up so it's placed up here. And it's right above an enormous pump. And this pump drives the paste into the blending tanks. But, but now look at this, we've got a lot of connections to make in order for this to be sealed. If you get the slightest amount of air drawn in here, because don't forget this side of the pump is sucking and this side blows, so it'll, so it'll be sucking in air here, it'll get beaten in and then the paste will go very pale. Now I've beaten some air into some Marmite paste and we've got some here to show you. Now just look at that. That's straightforward Marmite paste and this is what happens if you simply beat in air like that, wow. it goes very, very pale. But it tastes the same, St. John. It tastes just about the same, yes. It I'm just not, doesn't look like just Marmite, got though, no, it does doesn't. It? And the strange thing about it is that uh, because we've beaten in air, you've got loads and loads and loads and loads of bubbles in there, so the volume's gone up. This Marmite here will sink if you drop it in water. This Marmite here floats if you get it really, really pale. Great. A worthwhile thing to watch. But so well, there we are. I have a really good idea, because the children were so good with their balloon experiments. Yeah. How about children, because I know you have Marmite in all your classrooms, giving this a go. So after today's online field trip, put your white coats back on, all your blue coats, um, and give this a go. So beat up some of the Marmite and see if you can see it changing colour like this. And if you've got a microscope, just a thin film under the microscope, you'll actually see the bubbles in there. You can prove to yourself that I'm not a liar. OK, <laughs> there we are. So, St. Jim, once this process is done, is that Marmite as we know and love it? Well, at that point, we add secret ingredients. Now up to now I've not revealed a single secret ingredient to you and I'm not going to now either. We've oh. just had secret ingredients, blend it together and then it becomes Marmite and almost straight away we're able to put it into the jars and that happens just over there. I can't we believe go. you're not going to tell us. I thought we were friends. Oh, we are friends. That's, of course we're friends. We're, we supply you Marmite, don't oh, we? Of course. Like it. Yes, of course. Oh, yeah, there we are. Okay, children, time to take a look at this process in more detail now. Yep. Here's a short video all about how yeast is turned into Marmite. How does yeast become Marmite? Have you ever wondered what Marmite is? Would you be surprised to learn that it's mostly made of something called yeast? Yeast looks like this. It's a very clever fungus that we use to make different products, including bread and marmite. Yeast is a single cell organism, meaning it is made of only one cell, unlike your body, which is a multi cell organism made up of millions and millions of different cells. Yeast loves to eat sugar, and when it does, this causes it to release little bubbles of gas called carbon dioxide. And these little bubbles rather cleverly can be used to make bread rise or to make beer. And did you know that when you breathe out, you're also releasing carbon dioxide? But just how does all of this clever yeast become Marmite? The yeast arrives at the Marmite factory in big tankers like this. It's in a liquid form which means it's easier to handle. First, it is transferred into these huge vessels, which are called coppers. The coppers are heated up to 95 degrees in order to extract the nutrients from the yeast cells. Next, the hot liquid yeast is passed through a sieve to remove the solids. The solids, which aren't needed, are collected in this bin. The liquid then passes through a series of centrifuges. A centrifuge is a machine that whizzes the liquid round and round incredibly fast. This very fast machine separates the nutritious liquor from the yeast cell walls. Next, it is passed through an evaporator. This machine heats up the liquor and the heated water turns to steam. The evaporator is a very complicated machine and is so powerful that in just over an hour it uses the same amount of energy as you'd get from a bolt of lightning. Next, 
the liquor is forced through these thick canvas-like cloths. This makes it perfectly smooth and free from any sediment. The liquor is passed through an evaporator once more and at the end of this process it has become what we call yeast extract. The yeast extract is almost marmite, but not quite. To make the yeast extract into marmite, the producer has to add the secret ingredients. These are a very closely guarded secret. Do you think you can guess what they are? Once the top secret ingredients are added to the yeast extract, the marmite is blended for consistency. It is then tasted by highly qualified marmite experts to make sure it is of the highest standard. Finally, the marmite is put into jars, ready to be enjoyed by people all over the country. Welcome back children, we hope you enjoyed that. Give us a wave and a cheer in your classrooms Whoa. if you did. Yay! Oh, they, they enjoyed it. So Good. it looks, Injun, like we have to thank um, some very clever scientists for the invention of Marmite. Yes, big names. For a kick-off, the, there's Louis Pasteur, who established that yeast was a living thing. People just thought you, it's a peculiar material that you put into um, what we call wort to make beer. But he worked out that it was actually a living organism. And then there's a, a hero called Justus von Liebig, and what he did was think to himself, right, if we've got a living organism like a cow or a beetroot or anything like that, we can use that as food and get out um, all the protein and so on that's within it. He set about trying to get out the protein and so on out of yeast cells and produced a very, very simple idea of what we're doing in here today. Very, very simple, but you've got to imagine it's pretty clever to kick off with it in the first place. Yeah, it's great. And as we said earlier, there are a lot of people that love Marmite and eat it in lots of different oh. ways. I personally love Marmite on toast, but with some avocado on top. How do you eat yours, Sinjin? Well, would, <laughs> I like Marmite in chicken sandwiches, if you believe that, but there you go. And we've got, we've got a lady who works here, and her name's Jane Wade, and what she likes to do is eat Marmite and banana sandwiches. And we've also had people who say drink Marmite in milk. We export Marmite to Sri Lanka. And in Sri Lanka, they don't eat it at all like us. What they do is they stir it into a sort of savoury rice porridge. So it's like serving as a, a savoury flavour um, because it, that's part of their culture now. Great. Yeah, I, I like it. I've had Marmite before in like a nice, sort of just warm, warm water or hot water on a, on a cold winter's day. It kind of warms you up and tastes... Gives That's it a nice flavour, doesn't it? And you can put it in stews, stews and different things, anything that needs a bit of a kick to it, really. And when we taste Marmite, now you saw people tasting Marmite in, in the recent video, didn't you? Notice we don't taste Marmite spread onto bread, we put it into water because that's much cleaner. That's the way, that's the way to do it if you want to taste the Marmite, and then if there's something wrong, you know it's the Marmite and not the bread or the spread or whatever else you've got in there with it. Very clever indeed. And, as ch and children, as we learned earlier on in the video, uh, the marmite is a good source of B vitamins. And amongst other things, it gives us nice energy and uh, prevents fatigue. But we must remember also that marmite is high in salt. So we shouldn't just eat loads and loads of marmite, even if you love it like Sinjin. You, wow. uh, you need to live it and don't go crazy on the marmite. Unfortunately, Sinjin, we've come almost to the end of this online field trip. Well, there you but go. we wouldn't go without the opportunity to, to, to ask you some questions. So let's go to our schools now, because I'm sure they have some burning questions let's for see. you. Let's go to Hall Meadow Primary, first of all. Why is marmite black? That's a really good question. So why is marmite black? Black, Black, why is Marmite dark yeah. coloured? That's a very good question in that, as you've seen, when we get the yeast in, it's quite a pale colour. But look at this, that's just the walls on the yeast. Once the walls come away, and here you see them coming away, look at the liquid over the top. The material inside yeast cells is quite dark. So it's quite a complex reason why it's black, but it's because we're getting rid of the pale bits. There we go. Oh, great question, Joshua. Joshua. Let's go over to Loddon Primary now and see if Mrs. Simpson's class has a question. What makes Marmite so high in vitamin B? Let's find out from Sinjin. So, Sinjin, what makes Marmite so high in vitamin B? What makes it so high in vitamin B? Can you remember I said that Louis Pasteur was the guy who was working out that it's a living organism? It needs vitamins to survive, just like we do, just like most other things that are on the planet. 
And so there is vitamin B in the marmite and we, as I've also been saying to you, evaporate away a lot of the water and that'll be, there's also water inside yeast cells, so we evaporate that away and we're left with quite a lot of the vitamins that are found in the yeast cells. Oh, fascinating stuff, there you go. great question. Let's go to Oak Dean Primary now to see if Miss Bestwick's class has a question. My question is, how many jars of marmite are produced each day? Really good question, Bethany. Bethany would like to know how many jars of marmite are produced each day. Go, oh, hang on to this one, Bethany. <laughs> I'm going to give it to you slightly differently. I'm going to say how many jars of marmite were produced each year. Now, we can do about 25 million jars a year, which is a tremendous amount. Or the paste, what we can do, we could spread the whole of the world's smallest country, which is Vatican City, we could spread the whole of Vatican City in Marmite in about seven weeks. But <laughs> Bethany, I'm going to leave it up to you whether or not you decide to do the floors or the roofs, but if we do the roofs, I reckon they'll be able to see it from the International Space Station. There you go, thank you. Great stuff, and I reckon some people will love it and some people will hate it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get one final question yeah. from All Saints <laughs> Primary. Is Marmite from different countries made in the same way and does it taste the same? I think that's Genevieve. So Genevieve would like to know, does Marmite that's made in, the, um, in other countries, is it the same and does it taste the same? Is that Genevieve or Genevieve? Genevieve. Ah, oh, Genevieve. Yeah. Here we go. Marmite then, a lot of Marmite you'll encounter overseas, we was made here. We export all over the world. But there are yeast extract factories and there are factories that make materials called Marmite and materials with very, very similar names. They'll be fairly similar. There's two differences though. First of all, they'll de be depending on their local breweries, so there's, a, so there's a change there. And secondly, they'll have slightly different methods of manufacture, so there's a difference there. But I don't want to diss any of those. They're probably perfectly good products too. Brilliant, brilliant answers. Uh, we also have another question that's coming ah. via Twitter. Thank you very much. If you'd like to send any questions in when we are doing these online field trips, it's at Eat Happy Project. And also on our Twitter page, you'll find out all the different things that we're doing and all the next online field trips as well. So we have a question that's come in from Ruby in Dorset. Um, do you have official taste testers here? We Cindy? do, Ruby, to the extent <laughs> that we have people who take exams in tasting. So every now and again, the people who we feel ought to be tasting have to sit down, that we give them various things to taste, they have to grade them in terms of strength, they have to grade them in terms of size, sorry, what type, and then once they've done that, some of them pass and they're able to taste Marmite, some of them fail and they're not, and some of the ones who pass, as we've already said, don't like the Marmite. I don't know why <laughs> they pass, but they do, and we put them in harness straight away. Great question, Ruby. Perhaps Ruby would like a job. Do, true enough, Ruby, that's it, but there's an exam. Don't forget that. Oh, there you go. Uh, <laughs> talking of which, what is your favourite thing about your job, St. Jim? Well, the favourite thing about my job is I get paid. But not just that <laughs> I get paid, I get paid to taste Marmite. Just imagine that. I can get, I get up in the morning, taste some Marmite and think, there we go. Isn't that wonderful? I think that's tremendous. Oh, there awesome. we are. We've come to the end of this online field trip. I'm quite sad because I've really enjoyed hanging out with you, Sinjin, and you've That's told us kind. so much about Marmite. Mm. Children, really hope you've enjoyed learning all about Marmite with myself and Sinjin today. Uh, but it's time for us to go. But if you would like to take part in a school farm to fork trail, you know now what you need to do. You need to go onto our website and everything is on there. All the children that have already been on them have had a whale of a time and learned so much about all different types of food. So get yourself signed up. It's really, really simple. Uh, but for myself and Sinjin here in Burton on Trent, yep. we're going to go off and have some Marmite on toast, aren't we? So. Yeah, there with you go. maybe it's some chicken in as well. Right <laughs> <laughs> uh, goodbye, everybody. There you Thank go. Thank you for joining it. us. Wah. There you are. <laughs> goodbye, Hall Meadow. Hall Meadow, bye, right Dom. <laughs> goodbye, <laughs> Loddon Primary. Loddon, there you go. Dean Primary. <laughs> and finally, goodbye All Saints Primary.
Goodbye, it. everybody. That was pretty good, wasn't it? It really has been amazing having you join us today. If you'd like to join us on our next online field trip, that'll be taking place on the 3rd of December. We're going to be learning all about scrumptious chocolate. Mm -hmm. So join us for that. And don't forget, we have plenty of uh, online field trips on our website, ready for you to download and watch. And lots of resources too, as well, so you can get learning. So make sure you do that, and we'll see you next time. Next Bye. time. Cheerio. Right on, everybody. Bye. Bye.